Hey, good afternoon. Jason Phillips from Auto Appraise, AutoAppraise.com. I'm in Escondido, California today. Way nicer than it is in Michigan, mind you. Looking at a 1967 Shelby GT500. It's a two-owner car. Let's go through the underbody since we're down here and uh, move along. Original Kelsey Hay style uh, calipers. Those rubber brake lines look pretty old. Represented to be a 19,000 mile car. Been going through the car looking at some components and trying to decide that. Bolt in upper ball joints. Riveted original style lower ball joints. Um, power steering assist. That has been serviced. And shocks have been serviced. We did our best to try and get a reading on the back side. Right now we're above the left front tire and you can see right up there the faint hint of a VIN stamp in the apron but we are not able to uh, am I aiming at the right spot there? Yeah. Discern it. Not without uh, removing the Shelby tag. It's a late build car in the uh, upper 2400 range. We'll just say that for now. Original Mossport Green, original air condition car, track lock 350, four speed. It's got a, a period correct, but non numbers matching, 428 uh, block. I got a picture of that casting number. I can't remember offhand. I think it was 67. I got a little bit of a weep at the rear main seal, a little bit of a weep on the uh, top loader. Uh, tag information I've got uh, recorded and we got a little bit of a tail shift seal uh, drip as well. The um, rubbers don't look old and aged and cracked enough to be original 19,000 mile rubbers. Those probably got serviced somewhere along the way. Dust shields, I don't think those were ever restored. Unitized frame rails are in very nice shape. Lots of visible OEM spot welds. No crush point marks, no unusual damage you can detect up in the upper portion of the frame rails. No hook marks there really of anything substantial. So uh, looking down the, the aprons and looking down the spot welds of the vehicle, don't see any bends or falling apart or splaying as it's sometimes called. Did a digital paint meter and magnets all the way down. Oh, so let's not let's not jump to the outside. Let's stay underneath. Focus, focus, squirrel. Uh, unitized rails have a little bit of wobble in there just from lifting on a on a hoist. That's nothing, uh, nothing too unusual. There's been a a black textured paint applied to the rails on the floors and the wheel tubs, so uh, that covers up those. Uh, OEM spot welds make it a little more difficult to see if there's been surgery conducted, but my gut feeling is no. My gut feeling is that uh, that all looks and fits together pretty nice. Uh, early cars had the fuel line. I don't know if you can see it up there running down the inside of the tranny tunnel. This is a late car, so it wasn't always exactly. Let's see if we can get it up there. There it is. Not always exactly scientific. Also a line running up the rocker panel anyway. So shifter components uh, look to be in good shape. Shifter boot looks like it's been changed. Parking brake is uh, intact and hooked up. Uh, cherry bomb style aluminized exhaust with the correct style hangers running back and then we're uh, into a transverse mount muffler that's a replacement unit. Back up to the floors and rails though. Uh, no real evidence of any kind of replacement. Right here you can see that there's been some steel welded on the bottom of that rear rail and I'm guessing somebody had a set of traction bars back in the 60s or 70s mounted on there and maybe just fattened that up for a little more reinforcement. They're not currently on the car anyway. Uh, we recorded the uh, tag numbers, uh, uh, 350 uh, posi rear end. Uh, cast date is late, late 65K, I think it was K15. And uh, the uh, 
the ID tag indicates it was 67. So uh, that seems to match up nicely. Pinion snubbers are in place. Um, sheet metal throughout the back of the body. I'm sorry the lighting is not as good as it, as it could be, but the sheet metal through the back of the body looks pretty clean and uh, unmolested. May have been some replacement work done in the trunk extensions because that's a shiny kind of paint back there. A shiny kind of finish uh, comparative to what we saw earlier up in the floor. Uh, these inner splashes look good. The one inch rubber plug is there that goes to the uh, reverse lights. Reverse lights, by the way, are currently not working when the car goes in uh, reverse. Drain plugs, uh, the holes are there, but the uh, rubber plugs are not. Those need to be replaced. Fuel tank looks older and original. A little bit of just general wear. All uh, these leaf springs have been repainted. They have not been rebushed. If they were, it was a long time ago. A little bit of general patina on those uh, reverse light lenses. You can tell those are original, and that rear bumper might be an original piece too. The bottom side of it doesn't have the reflective quality that the rest of it does. Tail light bezels and uh, a gas tank door, and some of the Shelby trim is um, replacement trim. Uh, we we uh, laid some magnets all over the car just to kind of give you uh, the onlooker an idea of how magnetic it is. There's a little bit of filler uh, here and there in spots. I can't get a reading but nothing serious. A little bit of filler in both door corners front and rear, uh, but nothing really heavy in the splash areas. Splashes look really good. A little bit of uh, dimpling going on in this rocker panel, hard to see in the video, but it's actually hard to see when the car's on the ground. Back up and give a better perspective on that. We're gonna put the car down in a minute, go through the underhood real quick, go through the interior. Uh, Kelsey Hayes, 10 spoke, 15 by 6 wheels, uh, Carol Shelby caps. Those don't have the Cobra Snake emblem in them. I'm not sure why. Those are probably, probably a set of replacement caps. Uh, Cooper Cobra radials, well, those didn't come in today, but they're in pretty decent shape. Window trim and the glass looks all pretty nice. Car, car light markings on all of it. Going to go ahead and start bringing the, uh, the car back down. We'll take a look at the uh, brake pedals and the general wear on the glass and uh, do a little more determining on that uh, mileage report. Hard to really determine uh, miles on an old car. Uh, this fiberglass header panel is a little smoother on the inside than the last one I looked at. There were three different manufacturers of those. First one being, uh, oh, give me a minute and I'll tell you. Anyway, it's a later car, outboard headlights with the chrome rings, and it's a flat stance uh, grill, not the tilted, you know, angled grill with the, with the headlight buckets, you know, like on the inner, uh, the inner um, uh, bright lights. These lights are not currently hooked up or operating. I believe this is a replacement grill setup. We pulled one of these uh, blanks to get in there and access pictures of the tranny cooler which is supposed to be ahead of the core support and it is in fact in the right place so uh, that being said but the core support itself this component here at least this trim panel that attaches the grill is a replacement one this is a replacement rubber seal I do believe that core support is original I don't see the little cutouts right here but I don't see any indication that it's been changed either um, date code 67 uh, compressor replacement uh, water bottle, um, yellow top correct coil, replacement uh, Bakelite style connectors, replacement period hoses and clamps, uh, double post, the bigger battery uh, tie down. We got a replacement chrome uh, a breather cap, uh, stock style uh, Cobra uh, finned valve covers and a stamped, uh, stamped Cobra uh, replacement um, air cleaner lid, uh, dual holly carbs with uh, man mechanical uh, chokes and vacuum secondaries. Those are replacement units. Polished Ford intake, uh, that is not the correct um, part number. That's a replacement unit as well. Those look freshly rebuilt and they're reported to run pretty good. 
Heard him run a little earlier, we're gonna hear him again. The apron is in real nice shape, both sides. Don't see any wrinkles uh, at the crush points. Shock tower's in really nice shape, original spot welds, apparent. Antifreeze was a good and green uh, when we checked it. Oil is clean and full. There's a little bit of oil gathering right there on the intake. Fiberglass hood is a louvered unit and uh, they used these a lot on the air-conditioned cars because they were commonplace to overheat. Also moving those uh, uh, inner uh, lamps out, outboard helped the cars from overheating in the day. Uh, the hand-laid fiberglass look, the hood lanyards are attached to the uh, core support slash grill. Uh, the hood's a nice looking hood. Not sure about the OEMness of it, but uh, it may very well be. Uh, regarding the glass, we've got original car light markings on the windshield, a few small hairline, what I call ice scraper marks, but uh, chrome is in um, really good shape. Belt moldings were changed, uh, uh, mirror gaskets and uh, sweeps were changed, door handles were changed. Uh, Shelby badging was uh, updated, changed. Okay, we'll hop inside real quick. Also, these scoops are the faux. Um, these are not active uh, rear scoops. Yeah, only the early cars had the uh, the upper brake lights in them. And again, this is a late car, so we wouldn't expect to see that anyway. We'll cover the interior real quick. The door corners look really nice. The skin where it wraps the shell is in really beautiful shape. Rubbers have been changed. Uh, the door panel trim is in very nice shape. Original Shelby aluminum, uh, brushed aluminum trim pieces. Steering wheel's wrapped, and I imagine because it's doing a little bit of shedding and aging. Looks like an original uh, horn cap. Dash pad's got a little bit of warpage to it. And these pedals, they've got some general uh, wear to them. I don't know if we'd call that 19,000 miles, but it doesn't look like 119,000 miles. I think the shifter trim was changed. Original loop style carpet, original um, Cobra seat belts. An original trim up there with a few dings in the aluminum trim on the dash. AM radio is not operable, but the antenna's not on it. It's got the uh, six to eight grand red line on the tech. Showing 19,413 miles. These seat covers are correct. They use the Comfort Knit Weave seat covers. Most of them were black, by the way. Very few cars were in parchment. And they use those from January to May, and this is a a May, I think, 17th car, so uh, right on the edge of not not being uh, back to a 6A black vinyl. Um, two, uh, two spots where the roll bar mounts right to the roof, though that's in later cars as well, welded to the floor pan. Original trim in the back area, fold-down seats in very nice shape, top and bottom, a little bit of wear back on the package tray. And a few marks up there in the headliner. We're going to fire it up real quick. All right, quick shot at the trunk. Uh, fiberglass looks like it's in really nice shape. The trunk's not wanting to stay up on its own, so we got a custom prop rod there. This appears to be a, a set of uh, replacement uh, taillight bezels and lenses and a replacement uh, gas cap. Trunk extensions look nice. I peeled the mat back and looked here. Nothing looks like it was crushed or rear-ended ever. A little bit of uh, a rubberized undercoat or seam sealer there, heavily daubed. But I, I didn't really see any rot or decay from underneath. Uh, spare tire, we got a matching 15 by uh, 6 um, wheel. All right, we can go ahead and fire it up. you want to close that down? Cold start is... Uh, 